it's a new day here and uh, I think it might be the fifth day of working on this. Um, so it's starting, you know, it's still pretty early in the uh, getting the mid-tones, kind of that mid-tones turning into the lights. Um, I mean, in this case, this painting, it's you know, mainly the, the main place where it's happening with color is like in here in the face. So it's kind of all been leading up to that. And um, it's fun getting in the mid-tones and then turning them into the lights, basically. There's either shadows, middle tones, or lights. And just kind of getting them established right now. Uh, really kind of interesting colors. It is kind of an overcast day. You should think of when you mix up a color, you should almost be in the mindset of thinking of it as like a piece of pastel, like a stick of pastel that you picked up. And uh, that's why um, pastel, working in pastels is, is really great practice for, it really relates to oil painting really well. And I heard another artist uh, kind of give that analogy, uh, Leif Nielsen, uh, when I painted him with him once. Um, I remember him saying like, you, when you mix up a color, you should think of it as like a pastel. Or that was the analogy he gave. And it really is true. Um, you should almost think of it as, you should be in that same mindset as like you picked up a pastel and you're, you're putting it on. Because then you're thinking of like pure color, like a stick of pure pigment basically, and not some sort of wash that you're doing or and that's why and that's why there's really isn't anything more beautiful than a, a really nice pastel piece a, a painting done in pastel basically it can it surpasses uh, oil paint in that it's basically just pure, pure pigment. Um, hopefully I can do a pastel at some point. I think that's one of the reasons Brackman worked so much in pastel and maybe why he thought of broken color is because when you put down pastel you, you do kind of put it in strokes of color and it's like pure pigment. Especially in this stage I'm really paying attention to warm and cool shifts because it's so interesting I mean that's kind of the reason to paint with you know with bright chroma paints basically. Um, and so like this cool color I just mixed up it let's see if I can do this I don't think it's really going to work I don't think it's going to really work but um, maybe but basically you know it's up and up and through this through this area here So the warm and cool shifts is you're doing that at the same time as um, obviously trying to still paint the uh, correct color for each spot, the correct hue value chroma for each spot. But it is kind of interesting, all the warm and cool, cool shifts that happen across the face. And just a little bit further along here, um, still the main, the main focus is to try to get everything covered. Um, there's definitely, there's still a lot of spots that are still bare canvas, just like the toned canvas. So 
that's still the priority at the moment, but uh, it's nice to get a lot of like mid-tone, and this is, you know, this would be a mid-tone in here, across the nose, mid-tone area, a lot of subtle mid-tones across through here. So it's good to kind of get them in. And a little bit further along now, it's almost three o'clock. Uh, not gonna go for much longer here on, uh, today. Um, but I'm realizing I haven't hit the ear at all, really. So I'm just kind of glancing at it and seeing it's obviously very warm. You expect to find a lot of a lot of use for the uh, lizard and uh, lizard and crimson permanent and the uh, cronacridone rose, things like that. But it, as soon as you start painting, you start seeing that actually like this plane here is much cooler because the light source is, I mean, right now I'm looking at it, it's sort of overcast, but it, you can see glimpses of blue sky too. And my only goal is to get, get the piece covered. So there's no, no more, I like him, no more of the tone canvas showing. And then the actual painting starts at that point. Everything up to them is just kind of like laying the foundation. Like this part of the anti-helix, it's an interesting color at the moment. Sometimes it's really hard to identify what the colors are at all, even, even if you do or try to do this as best you can. It's, uh, it's like looking at the pastels and wondering exactly what, what shade of pastel should I put down? And you, know, you end up putting layers of different, different shades. The moment it's kind of I'm keeping that kind of warm in that particular spot. Right here on the earlobe, for example, it's a it's a shadow, and it's it's definitely very warm in that color in that spot, which you'd expect, because locally the ear has a lot of reddish, just like your your the same way that your ear gets red on a cold day. Locally, it just has a lot of red reddish, uh, has a lot of red in it, but it's a shadow also, so. Shadows have a warmer quality because of the cool light source. Eh, almost have it covered now. And really trying not to describe anything while painting. You know, not actually paint a, a nose or paint like that part of the lips or anything like that, or uh, just as much as possible trying to put in the right, the right color in the right spot. Sort of like, I guess, like a mosaic, as if you're not really painting, but you have all kinds of tiles, and you're just trying to place them in the right place. But in a moment here, I'm going to clean the palette, I think, and try to... Uh, try to have a fresh look basically with fresh color. And just real quick, I found that the easiest way to kind of clean the palette while painting is just to have, have multiple palettes, just or you just two that are the same size and same, you know, they're basically the same. And then you just have to uh, take, take each color and just bring it over here, you know? So just about the, the end of the day and uh, just about 
overall done with the first layer, like every piece is in place basically, even though it's it's rough, you know, somewhere looking at those old books, I know they talk about doing like a crude lay-in, basically not worrying about how polished the lay-in is or anything like that. You're just kind of, it should almost be like brutal, basically the way it's laid in, but still laid in correctly with the right colors. It's just, there hasn't been any refinement of edges really, or, you know, the, the flow of one color into the next. But uh, the, the main thing has been achieved, which is to just simply get all the pieces in place. And uh, and then, so I guess that the next session will be the actual, you know, it's, it's more like painting, basically. It's more, a little more fun. Um, but basically, you'll be retracing your steps. It may sound ridiculous, but you go back to the beginning, basically, and kind of go back. The first thing that was worked on was this, the dark shirt and then the background. Like, it'll be a lot of fun to build up the paint in here and just kind of have another look at it. I find sometimes it gets a little deeper and darker in a good way, though, because you have all the other information basically in place. So I guess the next one will be, the next video will be like doing the second layer, essentially.